Hey, welcome back. I uh, decided that I wanted to do a soldering series. This is part one. We're going to be covering two different uh, scenarios for soldering. One will be doing a, a junction of a wire. Say if you need to um, attach two wires together, what's the proper way to do it. And the other one is, uh, say you don't have a crimping tool, but you will still need to fasten wired together with a crank with so I'm if you've seen some of my videos I have mentioned that I'm not a fan of crimped connectors they do serve a purpose in some parts of the world just I'm not a fan of them um, they call it a cold joint and um, you know what I am always uh, more of a fan of if a more solid connection, I believe soldering or welding is just just the way to do it. Crimping just feels like you're, you know, just throwing it together because it's a time saver. But that's my own personal opinion. I know that's not the case. So we're going to run through those two scenarios. Um, behind me, you will see all these tools. I'm going to run through them all. Um, I haven't soldered in many, many years. To give you a little bit of a background, I uh, worked for a major um, electronics manufacturer. Um, and I did their circuit board repairs. Some of the, these circuit boards were just, you know, just replace a resistor. Others were I had to go underneath a microscope and pull the parts. Some were um, even processors, lifting them up, you know, uh, ball grid arrays. Yeah, it, it, it came uh, pretty tedious, but actually for me it was really relaxing. I actually really enjoyed doing it. The setup I have behind me, I have a uh, a uh, Radio Shack digital soldering station. <laughs> Radio Shack. That's how old it is. It's about 15 years old, but you know what? In today's standards, it's still a really good solder station. It says it's programmable for three buttons for different temperatures. Um, it could also, um, you know, it's variable temperature control. So it's really great if you really need to apply some high heat to something like a connector where you, you don't want to leave the soldering iron on it for an extended period of time. And then you just really start uh, degrading the parts, degrading the insulation around the wire. So it's just not a good day. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and run through all the equipment I have. You know, I may have thrown in a little bonus one at the end. I'm not sure. Just see how time allows with doing all this. I have a, a digital microscope over here too that we're going to show, get some really close up shots. You know, solder joints are, especially when you're doing wire on wire or something like that, they're never, they never look really pretty, okay? So don't be judging on that. It's just the way it is. Um, when you do circuit boards, then is when you can tell some soldering skills. That will be later on in this series. So, all right, let's jump to it and uh, give you a rundown of what I have. All right. We have my Microsoft Surface, a uh, Radio Shack solder station with Radio Shack solder. It's a 6040 lead based solder. We have the helping hands. We have the microscope. And if we pan back, you'll see it's hooked up to the surface. And then we have uh, various uh, solder tips of sizes. It's full wire. Now we have a flux pen. We got some snippers, the old school um, wire strippers, safety glasses, heat gun, automatic wire strippers, various um, size of uh, crimp connectors. These are most likely right here what you normally would see, and some heat shrink tubing. Now I know that we won't be using a lot of these things, but this, uh, that's about the collection of my uh, solder equipment. Now we're going to go ahead and turn on the Radio Shack uh, digital solder station. I'm only going to crank it up to about uh, 375 right now and uh, later on we'll definitely be cranking up the heat a little bit further on this. All right well we need to get the sponge wet and what's the best water for it? Of course the best Midwest bottled water is Ice Mountain. Only the best would do for my Radio Shack solder station. Now, when you 
um, wet down the sponge. You really just want it barely wet. I mean, damp. Um, you don't want to load it up and have it sopping wet. So when you clean the tip, a just a, just above damp sponge will do. Even though I have the manual ones, I really like these automatic wire strippers. I think I get them from Harbor Freight for like 15 bucks. They do a pretty good job. Just going to strip out two pieces of wire here and we're going to try to join them together. As you see, it comes off pretty easily. We'll do one more here and uh, we'll get going with uh, how to connect these. All right, so now that you have your wire stripped, you're gonna separate the strands a little bit and kind of push them together, mesh them together more like it, and basically overlapping the strands. And you're gonna twist one side clockwise and the other side counterclockwise. So you pick which side you're gonna do it, but you wanna twist both ends in different directions. So, and then once you get this completed, uh, you're, you're Twisted wires will be almost the same thickness as if it wasn't cut, which is real nice. It, you know, some people will just line them both up and then twist it together. This is the ideal way uh, because look at this. It looks almost like it was never cut. And this is what the wire looks like underneath the microscope. As you can see, it's almost the same thickness as if you didn't even cut the wire. Nice woven through. Um, also, you want to make sure that you have your heat shrink tubing on at some point, most likely before you actually twist the wires together. I have open ends, so it's easy. Uh, this is actually a flux pen. You want to apply flux at some point. You know, it's not necessary for this step, but uh, this, the flux basically will help clean and remove the oxides. So it's really good to get into the practice of using some flux, but I've seen it where people just use an extreme amount. The pen, you know, you just dab it and it goes on. So it's very easy to control. All right, at this point, we're ready to start soldering. Um, I did crank up the heat on our solder station to about 500 degrees from the 375. Also, you're gonna wanna clean the tip of your soldering iron before we begin. But you're gonna also wanna put a dab of solder on the tip this will help with the heat transfer. You're gonna put the soldering iron underneath the wire, pressing it on the wire, and you're gonna start pushing the solder into the wire. Once you start to see the transfer of heat and the, the solder melting, you're gonna to wanna to move the iron a little bit side to side. I have seen it where people just say, oh, you know what, just keep it in one spot. I'm not a fan of that. Um, I like to see the solder equally distributed um, amongst the solder joint. Um, you want to just be careful not to put too much solder on because it could wick into underneath the, um, the insulation. And this is what it looks like underneath the microscope. I know it's not that pretty, but at least it's not clumped up. Um, you can still make out the strands, which is the ideal amount of solder. Um, you don't if you see balls and stuff on there, and if you see it clumped up, it was just done wrong. Now we're going to go ahead and heat shrink. Uh, we're going to move the, the heat shrink tube over the joint and apply heat, uh, not directly on it, but circling around it. So you could use a lighter or um, anything with a high amount of heat. So some people will even use the, their soldering iron, but uh, solder, the soldering iron will take a long time. But just uh, you don't want to concentrate it on too much because the heat shrink tube will actually split. You're looking for it to just conform to the solder joint as well as around um, where the insulation is.
after you're done applying the heat, uh, you can take it off and inspect uh, your workmanship. Um, it looks pretty darn good. The the width of the um, heat shrink and everything looks almost exactly like the wire. You could flex it and then basically that's checking to see that the solder didn't wick too far past your initial joint. This really looks great. Now we're going to solder a connector. Not everyone has the specialized crimp tools to do a crimp, so what we're going to do is solder it. You want to make sure that your um, insulation is cut just to where the crimp is. So you see my wire does not go past the insulation, and all you have to do is take a pair of pliers and just squeeze it. And we're going to now prep this uh, for solder um, and promote solder flow by using flux. Flux will help with, like I said before, promote the solder flow as well as prevent oxidation. Kind of also cleans it too. So it's a great thing to have in your toolkit. A couple dabs around here, and now we're going to get ready to apply the solder. So when we do a connector, um, you're going to wipe down the tip with the sponge. You apply the solder on the tip. However, we're going to actually add a little bit of solder with the tip and the connector at the same time. You notice before we didn't do that, but here we need to promote as much heat transfer as possible. You know, the bigger the tip we have for this job, the better. Uh, this is still kind of a small tip for this, but we're going to make it work. Not everyone has the tools to do this, but uh, as you will see, with pushing more solder into it, we will promote the heat transfer a little bit faster. As the heat transfer starts, the solder is going to start wicking into the strands of the wire, and it's going to actually start pulling it. Uh, it's basically absorbing it. And once we start to see that, now we can start um, sealing up the seam from the crimp on the top. And once we do this, we know this connector is not going to go anywhere after we're done. And this is actually where having the heat shrink tubing on these alligator clips helps. It's not absorbing as much of the heat as it would if you didn't have these on. And now we're done. So let's take a look underneath the microscope of our uh, how we did. You can see that it's not going anywhere. Uh, the perfect amount of solder was laid down, and now we can start to get the heat shrink tubing on. You know, the same process as before. You're going to just uh, go around and circle or pattern just not applying too much heat in one spot again you could use a lighter or you could use a heat gun I prefer a heat gun um, it doesn't do as much direct heat and uh, heats it pretty evenly again don't uh, apply too much in one spot because you know the heat treat tubing will just split on you let's see what it looks like after this is done It looks like a pretty nice solid connector. Uh, you know, it's nice and insulated now. This isn't going anywhere. Uh, I think this will last any connection that you may have. Uh, so let's uh, see what we can do with something else now. Here are the typical uh, crimp connectors that you'll find almost anywhere from Harbor Freight, Home Depot, or even an auto parts store. Uh, these various sizes, open ended, closed loop like this one and they're fastened and crimped with just one of these you know red for a certain gauge and you know i'm just not a fan of them never have been i feel like they're always going to fall off well we're going to do something a little bit different we're going to strip the wires off and we are going to then send it through the hole of course after we twist it um, so we're actually going to solder part of it we're going to send it through a hole here and then I'm going to bend it just after the installation here. This is my mark for where we're going to solder this connector. This is just, to me, a little bit of an insurance plan here. Um, we're going to solder the end of this. So we're going to now bend this, 
pull the wire back, and then on that seam, I'm going to cut the excess wire off. Yeah, I didn't uh, record any of this, but uh, using a pair of flat pliers like this and then twisting the strand ensures that uh, the wire is nice and tight. Um, so now here, take a look. I, this is where the solder joint is going to go. Just a little dab of solder at the end. And then you crimp it. It's just a little insurance policy I like to do if I ever have to use these uh, god-awful connectors. I mean, I really do not like them. Again, we're going to use the helping hands. Wipe the tip, add a little bit of solder to it, help for the heat transfer. This is going to take a little bit, so don't be afraid to actually push a little bit of solder into the tip. Um, and then a little, just a little dab here will do wonders for a nice, secure connection. After we're done dabbing this little bit of solder on, you could choose to go ahead and uh, crimp this. And now, this should not fall off. All right, well, that concludes part one of this series. Uh, just joining two wires together and, you know, crimping on a, using a crimp connector, but soldering it in place instead. I know that some of you will look at my video and be like, well, you know what, I don't agree. And I expect that to happen. I'm not saying that my methods are the foolproof methods of doing this, but I believe it will give you at least a jump start. And that's all I'm looking for anyone to do. I've seen some really atrocious soldering in my lifetime, especially on some YouTube videos of, of recent. And uh, again, I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means, but uh, at least the solder joints that I do um, connect to, so to speak, I'm not worried about a failure. If anything, I would expect it to be a failure somewhere else. But, all right, so that finishes up part one. And uh, I don't know when I'll be doing the next series, but uh, I'm not sure if I can stick with with wiring itself or I'm going to do some through-hole. Uh, through-hole is, to me, very relaxing. I enjoy it. Um, and then we'll go to surface mount uh, devices, SMDs. That is another level of um, soldering. So, all right. Well, I appreciate your time, and uh, hopefully, you look forward to the next video. Please like and subscribe if you do.